Hi everyone, this is Andy. Welcome to another educational video from Med School EU. And today we are going to begin a new topic called Inheritance and Environment. And the first video of this new topic is going to be about mutations. So first we are going to discuss chromosomal alterations. And in the chromosome we have our genes. So sections of each chromosome have different genes. Of course, as you can see here, we've got um, two homologous chromosomes and I'm going to show an example of two types of uh, chromosomal alterations and typically these occur either randomly or they occur due to uh, radiation or other uh, chemical triggers and, and other environmental factors that would be associated with that. Now, however, the important thing to know is um, what these alterations are called and what do they specifically imply. So um, what we have here is just the same gene and basically one transforming into another. And this process is going to be called deletion. Deletion. And why deletion? Because this gene right here, gene F, is going to be completely eliminated from the chromosome. As you can see, A, B, C, D, E, F is eliminated, G, H. Now looking at another chromosomal alterations, and this one involves duplication. Duplication. And duplication is basically, again, we have the same chromosome. And what happens is within a gene, so these two, or, or these two genes within the chromosome D and E are duplicated and we have two copies of that gene now. So now we have DE happening twice. And that's another chromosomal alteration that could have significant impact on the organism. Same with the deletion. If you have uh, deleted a gene, for example, the codes for enzymes like insulin, then it obviously is going to have significant impacts uh, on the um, organism. And it's basically going to go through a certain disease if it's going to be viable at all. Now the other two uh, chromosomal alterations, so there's four in total, the other two are going to involve homologous and non-homologous chromosomes. Now here, uh, this is still going to be the same chromosome. I'm going to explain the easier one first, and this one's called inversion. And with inversion, basically the genes are inverted into uh, the opposite of how they were originally sequenced. So we got A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but this E, F, G is now G, F, E. So it's going to be completely reversed. And that's called inversion. And this happens on that same chromosome. Now, if we're looking at something called reciprocal translocation, reciprocal translocation and with with this type of um, alteration chromosomal alteration we have non-homologous chromosomes uh, involved so this would be the non homologous chromosome and what occurs is that genes are going to be interchanged between the homologous and the non-homologous chromosome. So we have this one chromosome with the F, G, and H. Now this F, G, and H is going to go onto the non-homologous chromosome, just onto completely a different chromosome. Let's say this is chromosome 3, and this goes onto chromosome 7, and these genes are going to be translocated into a completely different chromosome. And of course, the genes from that chromosome 7 are going to go over into a chromosome 3 right here. So this translocation, this exchange of uh, genetic or, or, or genes, entire genes from the chromosomes, is called reciprocal translocation. So there's four types. There's deletion, duplication that we've seen in the previous slide. There's inversion and reciprocal translocation. There's the four major types of chromosomal alterations. Next we're going to discuss mutation types. 
And typically mutations occur uh, during the process of uh, gene expression. So during uh, transcription, transcription, or DNA replication is another one, or translation is, is where mutations typically occur. And what we have here is uh, we have our typical sequence, and this is uh, going to be a bunch of histones of uh, the amino acid. However, the mistake that occurs is that the A right here, let me get a better color, the A right here is going to be replaced with a C over here. And this is a replacement of a single nucleotide, which produces a different amino acid. And this type of mistake is called missense mutation. Missense mutation. It's basically a mutation where an amino acid is replaced with a different amino acid due to a single nucleotide substitution that alters the genetic code by producing a different amino acid right here and obviously the protein is then going to go on and it's going to be severely impacted because it has a proline and instead it should have had a histone amino acid and this actually has quite a large impact on the protein it may even cause uh, another disease or it may have a, a protein that is simply not functional the next type of mutation is going to be exactly the same where we replace a C with a T. So there's just a single nucleotide uh, replacement. However, the difference here is that we have a stop codon. So the rest, the rest of the amino acids are not coded because we have a stop codon. It's over. That's the protein that is made. And this is called a nonsense, nonsense mutation. And nonsense mutations are extremely severe. They, they uh, completely render the protein in most cases because you don't even get the primary structure of the protein made. It's not just a single amino acid being replaced, but the entire open reading frame is not being read in a specific way because we get a stop codon very early. Now another type of mutation that can occur due to a single nucleotide insertion or could be due to deletion. So deletion or insertion. So you can imagine that if you are deleting an entire nucleotide, right? So this, this is completely lost. It's out of the picture. You get then this goes on to be CAC instead of CAT and it shifts the entire open reading frame and because it shifts as you can see here we don't get histones we get improper amino acids being formed thereon after because it, it creates a shift this type of mutation is called a frame shift mutation and this frame shift mutation is the most severe out of all types of mutations because it's going to come it, it can produce a completely different protein with a completely different function or maybe it would be uh, completely dysfunctional because of this uh, dramatic mistake that continuously makes the wrong types of amino acids now of course another one we didn't talk about is a silent mutation it's the one right here and that's basically if we have TTT and that's replaced with AAA you still get your lysine that's the original no mutation and why is that because of the degeneracy degeneracy of the genetic code and we talked about this in our previous videos so I suggest you uh, go check those out so that you understand the concept of degeneracy and how that can lead to a silent mutation where no actual mutation takes place except that, I mean, a nucleotide base pair is substituted. However, that has no impact on the type of amino acid that is made. And then we still have the same protein. So really there's no effect. That's why it's called a silent mutation. 
Now we talked about nonsense with the premature stop code on and missense with the production of a different amino acid and frame shift mutations. So this is kind of just an overview of what we talked about today. And the final thing, because we are entering into uh, evolution topic, I wanted to introduce mutations and evolution and the significance of mutations in terms of uh, the evolutionary aspects. Well, basically all organisms go through mutations and they are completely random. They're not dependent on the environment. They're not dependent on any sort of factors. They're completely random. So if um, an organism has, for example, a selection pressure of uh, because of global warming. So for example, a polar bear doesn't have enough ice to live uh, in its habitat. So the ice is melting and it has less ice. Well, you're not going to get the polar bears that are surviving. They're going to have some sort of genetic advantage over the ones that are not surviving. And uh, you could say that they had a mutation in their genetic code that led them to have a higher survival. But this is completely random. It was not due to the selection of pressure or, or the selection of the, the way evolution is, is made in terms of its environment having its pressure on the organism and the species to survive. It's simply because it, it was random. So some uh, polar bears had this mutation and they survived and they produced more offspring and these offspring survived and therefore this mutation was actually uh, helpful. It, it raised their ability to survive in that specific environment where the ice is melting. However, this whole thing was a random process. It was just luck. Now, uh, at the same time, because it is random, you could have a mutation that lowers your survival. So, uh, and then at that point, you would produce a lot less offspring because uh, your survival is limited. So maybe the polar bear is going to live less years uh, or not even reach its years of its reproductive years and therefore uh, the survival will be lower. So mutations occur all the time. They occur all the time. And they increase the genetic makeup of um, species. And why this is important, the increase of of uh, the genotypes. So you could have genotypes, for example, G and G, and you could have G and G, and little G and G. Well, it's gonna increase the number of different types of organisms with different types of mutations. And the higher the amount of mutations, the more it's able to survive. And why is that? Well, because if you introduce organisms or a species under different types of circumstances. And if they have plenty of, of uh, high capability of mutations, then what's gonna happen is they will be able to survive better. At least some species, at least some organisms or populations of organisms within the species will be able to survive versus a species that has low mutation rate, low mutation, well, then most of the organisms, let's say, are going to be uh, homozygous dominant for certain genes, right? Because they have lower mutation rates. So they're not going to have as many heterozygotes or the homozygous recessive. Let's say, for example, they're going to have more of the homozygous dominant. Now, if uh, an environment is imposed on them that actually kills the homozygous dominance, then the species is going to die off and none of them are going to survive because their mutation rate was so low. But if their mutation rate is high, the genetic makeup of the species is going to be very diverse. And the more the diverse, the higher the survival and the higher the fitness of the species. And that's the significance of mutations on evolution. Just remember that they occur randomly and the more ability to mutate, 
the higher the survival of the offspring in certain environments. So this concludes our first lecture in inheritance and the environment. In the next video, we are going to take a look at natural and artificial selection, as well as the evolutionary theories.